and go. Okay, should be synced. Fix my hair. <laughs> kind of update you guys. And eh, we start over. Um, something different. Start over. Let's try this again. Third time I've tried this now. Third time. Um, start over. All right, guys. Welcome back to the channel. I've tried this. I don't know how many times, but anyways, um, doing something a little different. I wanted to share my setup um, with what I fly on my drone um, and kind of give you all a breakdown on what I fly and a little bit about why I fly uh, the components that I do and the setup that I have. You know, it, it may be useful to you. It may not be useful to you. But anyways, I thought I would share it. I haven't done this in a while. Um, I think I did one many, 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 many moons ago, back before I was really even doing anything very good. That was back when I was flying like the um, the ginormous Flame Wheel 450 setup, I think. I might have done one since then. I can't remember. But anyways, that's the one I remember. So without further ado, let me kind of give you a breakdown on this is my setup. I've got two of these um, and they're identical. Um, and I'll break down all the components and a little bit about uh, why I chose each of those components. So we'll start, I guess, uh, with the frame, and then we'll work our way out and in. So the frame, this is a Martian uh, 2, 220 millimeter frame, and I really like this frame. I've been flying it for quite a while. The first one that I got was from Bot Grinder, actually. He had a contest, and I won the contest, and so he sent a, uh, a built drone to me, and um, I liked it. Prior to that, I'd been flying. Everything was like battery was mounted below it. I'd been flying the Sharpu QAVX and the Sharpu QAVXS, which is like a stretched version, more like a racing frame. Um, I've been flying those and been, you know, happy with them. But uh, when I got the one from Hot Grinder and was flying it, I kind of liked the way that it felt in the air, the having the battery and stuff on top. And um, being that this was a clone of the Immersion RC Alien. I kind of like that aspect. I like the design of it. Um, and you can get them really cheap on Amazon. So I ended up sticking with it. And I've, I've had one ever since. Um, in fact, the one that he sent me, I just... Uh, was it this one? Yeah, it was this one here, actually. Um, maybe it was the other one. No, I think it's the other one. Um, I just recently uh, replaced the frame on. The frame lasted like a solid three plus years, you know, of, of beating on it. Um, I don't know that I ever broke an arm. I did break some of the top plates and bottom plates. In fact, this one here actually has a broke bottom plate, but I doubled it up. Um, and so this one's, that's the only difference between this one and my other one back there. Um, this one has a, a doubled up bottom plate. On it but everything else is the same so frame Martian 2 220 um, props this is a recent change thanks to a buddy down here low rod FPV I know you guys heard me mention him many times um, we've been flying together since I've been down here so be I guess about eight months now something like that most most Saturdays you can find us somewhere flying um, Anyways, I had been flying the um, Ethics S3 props, and I like those props you know, pretty well. He was giving me a hard time about the noise, um, and he challenged me to um, to try the other the other props, and I was like, yeah, 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 I'll try them sometime. So one time we're out, he, uh, he goes, I got a gift for you. And uh, this was right around the time that the uh, peanut butter and jelly props came out. And um, so he took a set of these, and he painted them with the colors from the peanut butter jelly props. And they looked a lot like the peanut butter jelly props. And he goes, here you go, I got, I got you a set of, of uh, the, uh, the peanut butter jelly props. And um, I was like, all right, thanks, I'll give them a try. And um, 
I honestly didn't notice that they were painted at first and then realized that they were. But anyway, so I made a funny video about that too. Um, you guys have probably seen it. If not, I'll link it down in the description if I remember to. Anyways, so he had me try those props out. And after trying them and giving them a good fair shake, I ended up switching to them. really like them. Um, in particular, when I decided to switch to 2306 motors. So we'll go to motors next. These are Ecomax 2306. Um, are they 2400? I can't remember. 2400 or 2450? I don't remember. I'll, I'll put it down at the bottom. And they'll be linked down in the description. All the stuff will be linked. Not affiliate links. I'm not trying to make any money. But just links to where I get my stuff at. Um, so the Ecomax Eco 2 uh, 2306, 2400, or 2450 again. Like I said, it'll be down below. Um, really like these motors. Um, prior to that, I've been running, I've ran 2207 motors, and I had ran 2205 and ran 2206 motors. Um, and in particular with the 2207 motors, I always found I had trouble with the bottom end and getting the problem of kind of like ballooning up. Like, you know, you come out of a dive and you kind of you give it a little throttle and you kind of balloon up, particularly like a split S over something you want to come back through. Um, I found that I had trouble with getting the throttle just right. It was always, always seemed a little touchy to me down there. Um, so much so that I even adjusted my um, my throttle on my uh, my controller with OpenTX so that it would kind of soften that a little bit. Um, but with these, I found that I really like it. I like the way they feel. Um, top end still good. You know, I generally don't ever reach top end, so I don't need you know raw power. If you want raw speed, you know the the o the twenty two o sevens definitely have more top end. Than these, but it's you know it's it's slight. Um, so, anyways, that's the motors. Next in line, ESCs. I've done a lot of testing with a lot of different ESCs. Played around with all kinds of ESCs. I've done four and one. I've done the the single ones, and I always end up coming back to the, the single ones on the arms. I like these because if I blow one, then I only have to replace one. I don't have to replace, you know, a whole board. Wiring, definitely the all-in-one is way simpler. It's much easier to solder. It's much cleaner. It's a lot less to deal with. But if you blow it, you know, which I, again, it, it's pretty rare. But if you if you blow it, then you know that's a little more expensive um, than the, uh, the the single ones. Um, some people, I think, Drew Camden. He swears by the single one, says that they fly smoother. I don't necessarily believe that. Um, I just kind of like the um, the fact that if I screw one up, they're easier to replace. Now, that being said, it's probably easier to screw one of these up than a four-in-one because they're on the arms. So, you know, you take one, leave one. It's just what it is. That's just what I'll use. Um, the SCs that I'm using on here, though, are RDQ, um, VLAS, um, ESCs, they are 3 to 6S, I think they're 30 amp um, ESCs, again those will be linked down in the description, um, I've been pretty happy with them, I did blow one, I don't know what I did to it, but I destroyed one, but that's been it, and I've, you know, they're cheap, like 10 bucks, um, maybe even cheaper, but, so I like these really well, they're pretty good, um, I've had success with DYS ESCs, um, real good success with those. So if you like DYS brand stuff and you can find those, they're really good. Um, really good ESC, very durable. I had I had a set on one of these quads up until I finally destroyed them. And I mean, they took all the abuse on that on my original Martian two. Um, I had them for three plus years. So yeah, very good, very good ESCs. Um, Next in, we've got the flight controller. So I'm using KISS flight controller, not the V2, the V1, and not even the latest firmware. It's like 1.30 something the other. Again, I'll put that down here, and I'll link to the, the flight controller. You can still get the V1s. I get them from RDQ. Um, 
I just like them. Um, they're really easy to wire up. I'm used to them. Easy to tune. You know, at some point I may go to the, the newer Betec ones. I don't know. But I kind of like these. I like their form factor. I just, I just like them. So they fly really well. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with them. Um, now, getting the signals to the flight controller, I'm running a TBS nano receiver with Immortal T. Um, and then for the, you know, that's, what's there to say? TBS Crossfire, man. I, I didn't have for the longest time, and I would definitely never go back to anything else. Um, for the video transmitter, again, TBS. I'm running the Unify Pro 32HV, cranked all the way up to full power. I'll let you look that up to see what that is. Um, 1,000 milliwatts. Um, anyways, um, so running that, and been pretty happy with that. And that's connected to a Boxer Lollipop. really like these. They're durable, good reception. Um, so that's that. Um, camera is the Runcam Hybrid 2. So that's what I'm also recording with. So instead of having the GoPro, I'm running this and recording with it. Um, really happy with it. Camera angle, I have no idea. I used to run, used to run a really high camera angle and then I got to where I was running a really low camera angle for a long time. And since I've got this, I've been running whatever I can max it up to here. I think it's probably about 30 degrees, I don't know. And been pretty happy with that. So, and then the settings for this, I've got a video where I put together the settings, I believe, for this. If not, those will be down in the description here too, all the settings. Um, and what else is there? Um, yeah, I do have a little cap in here. I don't know what that is. Whatever the cap is, I'll, I'll look it up. I've got another one later on here, and I'll put it down in the description too. Um, I've got some Umagod grip on here, and the battery straps are the power drone. These are Kevlar straps with like the rubber um, ingrained in them. I don't know if you can see that they're not really like these. Again, my buddy Flo Rider recommended um, recommended these straps, and I've been really really happy with those. So, um, and he printed these 3D bumpers here. Got these on here. And you'll notice these are kind of, uh, some people flip them over and put them the other way, put them on this way, a little more durable. And then these are actually held on with some E6000 or some people might call it Shugu. So put some Shugu up under there, put these guys on, and then run the screws up through there. And that really holds on there solid, doesn't come off, and makes it really, really, really durable. Um, and then on the bottom, he printed these little feet things for me. Um, and no, I'm not running two screws, but you only see two here. The other two are actually underneath this. This is the way these mount. Um, and is there anything else of importance on here? Oh yeah, so on the Martian, I run the arms under it. And I take the little uh, plate thing that they've got for the PDB. Um, I get extra of these frames, and then I use one of these on the bottom here. It gives a little extra support there. And then there's another one up under PDB here. This is the PDB that comes with the Martian um, that I'm using there. And so I put that up under there. And then instead of using the built the hardware that comes with it, I use the um, I don't know what these things are called, but it's not the button head, it's the big flat deep ones. Um, two and a half millimeter um, M3 screws there. I really, really like those. And then I use these little bit of washer things I get from uh, Power Drone to go up under there. And I like the way that kind of uh, expands out the pressure from the screw down there and makes this each of these connections a lot more durable. I really ought to do that on the bottom here, but I haven't done that. I might 
I might do that here soon. Um, make these a lot more durable because I find sometimes this will be like a fracture point. And if you put a washer there, it kind of um, divvies out the force a little bit, you know, evens it out and uh, keeps you from breaking stuff. So, yeah, that's basically everything in here, I believe. I don't think I have left a single thing out. Um, so, hopefully you guys enjoy this little breakdown of, uh, of my drum. And I will see you guys in the next video. If you have any uh, comments, questions, you know, leave those down below and I'll do my best to answer all of those. And if I think it warrants a follow-up video or you have an idea for a follow-up video, you know, let me know and um, I'll make that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.